वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो अनफॉर्चुनेटली हे गाइस वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो आई जस्ट फिनिश्ड अ टू एंड हाफ आवर सेशन विद वन ऑफ माय स्टूडेंट टीचिंग सम ऑफ द बेसिक्स एंड एडवांस कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ पैंडस बट माय लैपटॉप लैपटॉप डिडंट रिकॉर्ड इट प्रॉपर्ली सो हियर आई एम ट्राइंग टू रिकॉर्ड द होल सेशन फ्रॉम स्क्रैच बट दिस टाइम विदाउट द स्टूडेंट सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड so first things first import pandas as pd okay so this is the most important library uh, when it comes to uh, data transformations and data cleaning so we often use pandas library for everything related to data transformations so majority of the time whenever we are dealing with any kind of relational database we always use pandas library there are some other libraries out there which are somewhat uh, faster compared to pandas uh, but majority of the uh, repositories that are available online have been built with pandas and also pandas offers a lot more variety of methods that you can use with your data uh, compared to other um, other libraries and also it's much easy to debug and also since it's been uh, it's been available from a very long time if you have any kind of error or if you face any problem with the logic or if you want any code uh, help then you can simply google stuff and chances are uh, high for you to find pandas related data transformation code compared to others <coughs> okay so let's get started so when uh, you think of pandas the first thing that comes into our mind is data frame so let me just give you a quick walk through on what exactly is a data frame and how do we use it data frame is just a different data type altogether okay what is it it is made up of series so when you take a bunch of series and if you combine them together you will get a data frame okay so what exactly is a series series is nothing but a glorified list okay it is a one dimensional array created by pandas okay so from list you can get series from series you will get a data frame let's say i will create a list here okay this is a very simple list let's print it okay we have this as a simple python list let's create a series out of it Did I not run this? Okay, so this is a series. Now, right off the back, you can see the difference here. First thing is, this is a list, and it does not have any indexing. Although uh, you can still use something like arr of 0 or arr of 3 to access a particular element yeah so you will be able to use this sort of indexing here but you can't explicitly see the indexing here but for a series data type whenever you print it you can see that there is a index okay so here let's take a different array okay so each element has got its own index here and also you can see the data type in this case this entire array is made up of integer 64 now let's change one element into string now this has turned into an object 
not only this but every other element even if i don't mention it here even if i don't have any inverted commas here every other element in this entire uh, series is going to be a string value okay so that's something that we have to take care of uh, so if the data type of a series says object you need to assume that every single element is a string value so as i said if i take a bunch of series it's what we call as a data frame and for these series let's give a name or let's give it as call one similarly i'm going to create few other columns column two column three so if i take all of these different series I can create a data frame but this is uh, a different uh, approach from what we usually follow in data science or in uh, data cleaning I should say so here I'm defining the column names manually but this is not so easy whenever we are dealing with huge amounts of data so what we do is we generally create a dictionary So I've created a simple dictionary here and these are my keys, these are my values. Now D and F both should be capital letters by the way. This will automatically create a data frame for me. So data frame is basically a tabular structure. So you might have used Excel, you might have created tables manually. Uh, even in word you can create tables so similarly this is just another spreadsheet just another table okay so here you can see all of the key names have become column names and all of the values have become uh, independent columns uh, if there is someone who doesn't understand difference between rows and columns this entire thing whatever you see here in vertical format from top to bottom is called as a column this thing whatever you see in horizontal manner from left to right is called as a row so this oops, this is row number one row number two row number three four five okay i hope everything is clear so far now whenever i create a data frame you can see this serial number has been created automatically even though i didn't pass it manually same thing over here so this is actually called as index the same index will be present to my data frame as well okay so pandas is automatically going to create an index for the data frame now let's store this in a variable i'm using the variable name as df this is actually a very common practice so you can go on to github or uh, stack overflow you'll find number of examples where people use df as the default like the standard variable name for data frames <coughs> so this 
sorry okay since we have df here let us see what else we can do with this data frame so what is a data frame data frame is another data type okay so this is a data type list is also a data type series is also a data type so whenever we say that something is a data type it should have certain unique properties certain unique methods that you can use so in our case if i have a list i can use list dot append if i have a string i can use string dot strip or string dot replace if i have uh, uh, any other data type i'll have n number of methods to use with that similarly for a data frame we have so many different methods one common method is head sorry uh, one very famous method is dot head so whenever i use dot head i'll get the first five elements printed okay so this will give me the first five elements i'll say df1 is equal to this thing okay let's print it okay so printing the data frame will result to something like this here you can obviously see that there is a slight difference in appearance here it looks much more organized and uh, you can see that alternative rows have a blackish background but here you don't find anything the font is also a little different and the column names are bold here but nothing here so there is some difference in terms of appearance that is because here i am not using print function but here i'm using print function suppose uh, if you want to not use print function and get this exact uh, appearance inside of your code let's say if you have some uh, some additional code here so if you are using a dot py script let's assume that all of this is your code let's assume you have some code here so you can't use uh, a df here right so it won't print anything so in those scenarios jupyter notebook has an advantage instead of print i can use a function called display so this is something that you'll find only on jupyter notebook if i run this here you can see display is giving me the exact same thing if i don't add anything here by default jupyter notebook is going to use the display function that is the reason why you will see everything in this particular uh, format but if i do use print then it's going to be just plain old python print okay yeah that was just a quick introduction to display now let's go back to head so here head is a function that you head is a method that you can use to print top n number of rows by default this is going to take five as a value if you don't pass anything it's going to take five and it will print you the first five rows let me add few more rows here add a few more okay so if i don't give any head it's going to print me all the rows suppose if i have 100 elements it will show it to you like this okay so from the index here you can see there are 900 rows and three columns and uh, it will show you the top five and the last five here and everything in between will be displayed by a dot 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 
for now i'm going to just remove that part okay or actually you know let's keep it so this is the df now if i give df dot head by default it's going to take five but for now i'm gonna give seven dot head of seven will give you the first seven rows okay similarly i can use dot tail this will give me the last seven rows okay and also there is one more important uh, method that you should be aware of which is called shape so this is not actually a method this is a property that's the it's an attribute we call it as attribute that's why we don't have to pass any parenthesis here but df.shape will give you number of rows and number of columns in a tuple okay so that's pretty much it about head and tail So in my data frame, I've got three different columns. Now let's try to access only one particular column. I want to sub. I want to get only this entire column as a series. So as we know, data frame is made up of series. So if I want to separate any one particular series and then do operations on that series, I can simply give the name of the column here. So this is the syntax just put a square bracket and then pass your column name so that should give you a series and here you can see this is the name of the series this is the length of the series and data type is object if i go into a different column this is integer 64. okay so here we've got this column there is a different way of accessing it suppose if you want to write it in the code this is also possible it will give you the exact same result but it's never ever recommended to write like this when you write it like this it becomes extremely obvious that you are trying to access a particular column but when you write it like this there could be a misconfusion between method names and column names so over here i'm using col underscore three it's quite obvious that it, this is a column name but if you have some other column name which could be very similarly uh, which could sound uh, very similar to a method then it's going to be very confusing for the readers so it's always recommended to go with this approach this syntax okay so right now we are able to access one column but if you want to access multiple columns then instead of passing a string value here you are going to pass a list okay instead of passing a string you'll pass a list this will give you not a series but a data frame but this time you have only the column that you have mentioned in your list since this is a list i can give as many columns as i want and also the order is going to be whatever i defined here so if you observe the original data frame had column one at the beginning and column 3 at the end but here since I've given it in this order my data frame will be in this order okay so let's define this into a variable called df3 for now I'm just going to remove this column let's use only these two okay so we've got both of these
so we have seen how can we uh, get or how can we filter out a subset of columns right now let's see how can we filter out a subset of rows for filtering out uh, particular columns you can just pass them in a list like this but for rows you need to use either lock or ilock okay so these are the two different methods that we can use for row wise operations let me show you how the syntax looks like Okay, so this is the syntax for lock i lock uses an exact same syntax the only difference is well the i part so i here stands for index so instead of giving column name i'll give column index which means this will take numbers this will take names okay so let's use it I'm gonna use this data frame df3 and it has two columns right so let me or I'll just use the same thing I'll use df to get both of these columns one after the other df from 0 row till uh, 900 row I want column Oh, my bad. Dot LOC. Okay, so here you can see it gave me all the rows and it gave me column 3. Now here if I pass the same thing as a list, I'll get a dictionary. Now I've got advantage here. I can change the number of rows that I want. If I change it to 10, I'll get top 10 rows. Or in this case 0 to 10. I can also change this into, uh, let's go with 4. 4 to 10 so whatever rows I've got in this 4 to 10 part will be here since this is a list I can also pass as many columns as I want there you go okay so that's how we can use lock let's do the same thing with I lock oops copy this paste here if I put I here you got an indexer I lock requires numeric indexes but instead we got we gave it this particular value so this is uh, unable to identify the indexes and it will throw you an indexer to fix this simply go with two and zero because remember this is index index always starts from zero so my first column will be zero second column will be one third column will be two if i run this you can see the exact same output Let me give it as df5 df4 
day of fight. Okay, so here you can see uh, 4 to 10, 4 to 0. Oh. Okay, uh, yeah, seems like I lock doesn't take the last value into consideration. This is not inclusive. So here if I pass 10, it's going to take the 10th index into consideration. But for I lock, it just stops at 9th index, which is what you can observe here. For DF4, you've got the 10th index row, uh, which means the 10th row. But for I lock, 10th is not included. Trust me, this is the first time that I'm finding out about this. Okay. So right now we were able to identify this uh, particular row slicing. So we are able to shortlist and select a small sample of columns and small sample of rows. Now let's see how can we change a particular value instead of our data frame. So here I've got DF5 let's see df5 okay so this is my df5 from this i've got john repeated twice so wherever i've got john twice i want my column one value to become something different i want this to become 5000 for that i am going to uh, use a completely different method called iter rows okay let's take a look at what is iter rows so iter rows is a generator object so since this is used for iteration let's use it in a for print i print type of i and length of i okay so in each iteration i want to print i type of it and the length of i okay so here you can see in every iteration we got this entire value as i and it is a tuple obviously you have got your round brackets length is 2 which means there are two elements inside of it first element is the index second element is the row value so the entire row is going to be converted into a panda series and that series will be printed it will be given to you it will be returned so i'm going to do i of 0 I of 1 okay it's the same thing now let's separate it let me use df5 it's taking 13 seconds see that is good okay so 4 is my index 4 is my index column 3 column 1 column 3 and column 1 td5 td5 this entire thing is a panda series you can see the index name data type and everything and it is a tuple and the length is 2 so i'm going to get rid of this part so what i'll do is index comma row is equal to i of 0 comma i of 1 let's do it like this okay so i'm getting my row here if i go all the way back to the very beginning 
here I've shown you how to use pd.series to create a series right now let's take any one of these series call 3 let's take call 3 okay call 3 is a series now I will use the index right, let's go with uh, what should we go let's go with 2 I'll use the index to access the required element as you can see I'm using 2 and at 2 we've got this particular value since this is an object data type this is going to be a string value that's what I got here similarly if I go all the way down here I'm going to get all three this is going to print me all the names okay now what I'm going to do is I'll write an if condition if this is equal to join print found a join and let me remove this okay so I've got two print statements here because John has been repeated twice so wherever I've got John what I'm going to do is uh, by the way if you want to identify uh, the count two right so this is one way of doing it but instead of writing this whole bunch of code you can simply use dfi dot count oh sorry dfi call 3 dot count john give me a second yeah value counts this is going to be a series again now I'll use John here that will give me two I can also use any other name you'll get it in a matter of seconds okay so this is an optimal way of finding out the count of each value let's leave that there instead of doing this let's stick to the original question I want to change column 1 value into 5000 right so in my third column change the value to 5000 in call 1 to do this I will simply use df dot lock I'll pass the index here I don't have to give any slicing if I go back dfi.lock uh, let's take any index let's go with 6 let's take all the columns whatever are present so here you can see I've got Okay, put it like this. Uh, let's give it as call three, call one. I'm passing both of the columns. Okay, so here this is returning me this one particular uh, 
with this one particular row so if I change it here okay 6 is T right I'll change this into pt dot series of I need to pass two values one for this one for this and also the data type should also match so Steve is inside of column 3 which is an object data type name is inside of call oh, sorry uh, 7 is inside of column 1 which is an integer data type you will not find that information here but yeah it's important to note that point if not you will just go through an error let me show you Oh yeah, automatically pandas is going to convert that into uh, an integer, uh, sorry, into a string value. So let me go into df5. So here we got the index. Now I'll give my column name. So I'm clearly saying that at this index, in this column, change the value to this part. Oops, just made a mistake almost. DF5. Run. Oops, my bad. Let's run this. Let's run this. Steve, John, John. Here you can see wherever we have got John, the value has changed into 5000. So now you know how to change any particular value. Next thing is, <coughs> let's try to filter the entire data frame based on condition. Okay, so let's take the same thing again i'll go with john because why not df i'll give a square bracket and i'll pass one more list here or let's go with arr false true false 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 so 0 1 0 and 1 2 3 4 5 2 3 4 5 so wherever I've got John I've passed true value in that position oh my bad D5 okay so here you can see it automatically filtered my data set and it gave me only these particular rows but there is a proper way to do that this is the most ugliest way to filter a data frame so let's see how to do this here i'll say df of call what is it three equal to equal to job dfi okay so dfi is uh, checking if each row is matching with this value and it is giving giving me a pandas dot series of boolean values here i'm using a list here i've got a series i can use any one of them so let's use this 
so arr equal to this whole thing df of arr by the way arr stands for array df5 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 okay so we are able to get the exact same result here as well i can also pass the same thing directly inside i don't need a different variable for filtering okay i'm able to do this without any issue because i've got only one condition but let's say if i have more than one condition that's where this comes in handy so what we usually do uh let's see how can we filter it i want actually let's go with a different one let's go with df3 and i want to get all the values where column 2 is more than 10 and the name should be gabe okay let's rewrite the whole thing simple you can also write the entire thing in just one line but it's easy for us to understand if i break it down like this okay so this gave me the entire subset i'm able to filter with multiple condition let's write the same thing in just one line is my condition one take it put it here this is my condition two take it from here put it here the reason why i'm putting them instead of brackets is just for clear visualization just so that we don't have any confusion on where is my first condition ending and where is my second condition starting now i'll take this whole thing I'll put it here. There you go. I still got the exact same result. Two hundred rows, three columns. Oh, my bad, my bad. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you can use multiple conditions to filter out the data. John Steve gave Charlie John. Okay, column one and column two. 
let me create a brand new data frame for you guys I'm not going to waste another variable again so I'll just create a dictionary inside of the definition itself Okay, so we've got two different data frames here df1 and df2. Let's check them out. Underscore. Okay, it's giving me as a tuple. Let's use display here. So I've got my first data frame and my second data frame. So what I'm going to do is I'll add one more element. So here you can see there are two different rows with the same ID but different age. Let's suppose I want to remove my duplicates. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is drop duplicates. So I've used drop duplicates, but I still have the same exact rows. It's the exact same data frame without any change. That is because even though there are same, even though the name is exactly the same, ID is the same, age is totally different. So here what I'm going to do is I'll use 
a parameter called subset i'll pass name id so i'm explicitly telling my python i'm telling my pandas to make use of only these two columns while checking for duplicates so if the name has been duplicated and if the id has been duplicated consider that row as a duplicate row so in our case index 0 and index 4 is repeated so index 4 will be considered as a duplicate this will remain original this will remain duplicate okay here you can see the last row has vanished if i want to do the opposite way i'll say keep equal to first okay this will keep the first row and it will drop the last row so if i don't pass anything it will take first as the default value but if i say keep equal to last it will keep the last row and it will drop the first row so here you can see index 0 has been dropped so this will be considered as original and 0 will be considered as duplicate if i use keep equal to last okay so that is how we can use drop duplicates here you can see i've dropped the duplicate but if i print df1 oops if I print df1 again nothing has changed I still have the same duplicate row why is that that is because whatever operations have done here are not being assigned to the original variable so my original variable will not be affected at all so how can I deal with this well df3 equal to this I can do it like this so I'll have two variables then df1 will remain as it is and I'll have a new variable called df3 so I, I've got two different data frames but suppose if you don't want to waste your memory if you don't want to have an additional variable and if you want to edit the existing data frame then you can use in place equal to true so this is a very simple method that you will find across your entire uh, pandas methods so whatever methods you have available in pandas will have this as a parameter so if i use in place equal to true this is not going to return anything okay this will just do the operation in the back end the original data frame will be modified and nothing will be returned let's see okay if i run this back here you can see the first row has been dropped there are no duplicates here okay so that is how in place equal to two works now what i'm going to do is i'll change the order of this data frame with respect to age so i'll say df1 dot sort values by I can pass it like this or I can pass it like this so if I want to have multiple columns if I want to uh, sort it by multiple values then I can do it like this but for now we have only age so let's go with age if I run this uh, so values plural So here you can see the data frame got sorted if I go back and print df underscore one this is still the original one okay this did not change so I'll pass in place equal to two there you go now the original data frame itself got modified 
you might have observed here when I sort my index uh, sorry when I sort my data frame my index values are messed up so right now this is not starting from zero and it is not in ascending order so what I'm going to do is I'll simply say new index Okay, now I'm passing this as my data frames index. Let's see if that worked. Okay, so here you can see it has been changed. Let's change it to something else. 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so this has been changed. So instead of passing it manually, there is a different way to do that. df underscore one dot reset index. Drop equal to true. So whatever index we have right now, currently it will be dropped and a new index will be created from scratch. yeah so reset index drop equal to true it had it has uh, changed the index same thing the original data frame will not be affected here you can see it is still 10 11 12 13 so i'll use in place equal to true So here you can see the data frame has been changed, everything has been sorted by age and we have got our index back. Now what I am going to do is, instead of using these numbers as my index, I want to use my id column as my index. So if I do df of id, oops, df1 right? one so for the df1 of id i've got my uh, series here so index equal to i'll assign this as my new index let's check okay so here you can see my index has been changed and over here i've got id as the name of my index and these are the indexes you can also check this by going through iter rows again So here you can see these are my new indexes or indices or indi uh, you get the idea okay and again my rows are getting printed as usual nothing has changed here let me delete this if I want to reset everything, if I want to go back to the original form, I'll simply use one dot reset index.
okay so here you can see it's not able to design okay uh, so before we do that we've got id column here so id is a independent separate column since we are using id as our index we don't want this as a column again so let's drop that column to drop a column we use columns equal to id you can also do it like this or you can get rid of the list part and you can pass a simple string as well but if you want to drop multiple columns you need to pass it as a list okay it has dropped but this did not affect my original data frame so i'll use in place equal to true and i'll use df underscore one there you go now my original data frame has been modified now if i want to reset everything back and bring id back here as a separate column i'll use df one dot reset index okay now my index whatever i had here has become a column again uh, previously you might have seen that we got an error saying that id is already present so whenever you are trying to reset index make sure that your column is not already present here if it is already present then you will face that error okay so that's how you can make use of reset index and it can be passed without the uh, where is this it can be passed without the drop equal to two parameter as well suppose Now for i in df dot writer rows int i of zero. Okay, the original data frame has not been changed yet. So, place equal to true. Run this. Now run this part. Okay. Cool. So that is pretty much it about reset index. Uh, what was I going to show you guys? Oh yes. So there are two more topics left, which is grouping and then joining. So under grouping, we have a group by function. So there are different ways to use this group by function. You can use it instead of a for loop where you can play around with each group at a time or you can do a complete aggregation. So that will make use of any one particular function and that function will be applied to all the groups. So we'll check that out later.
uh, I think we can throw this to the end let's go with joining first it's much more easier than grouping so in joining we have two different ways of joining uh, three actually so we have concat we have merge and then we have join okay so I'm just gonna take a quick break let's go through all these different things one at a time